35,000 on a Monday night. Safe to say we've got some believers, and the Giants do not disappoint any who make the journey out to the stick this evening. Mariners up 1-0 behind Randy Johnson when Rich Aurelia, sweet spot of the bat, right it to left, his fifth of the year, comes with nobody on, but it's tied 1-1. Giants load the bases as the inning continues. Jeff Kent, you've seen Ken Griffey Jr. make so many great catches. Not this time, because the Giants have everything going for them. Goes for a two-run double, 3-1 lead. They add another in the fifth off Johnson. When you say big unit these days, you're talking about his ERA. Barry just got it through the right side. 4-1, Alex Diaz in. Come the ninth inning, Giants leading only 4-3, though. Joey Cora looking for a stiff hit. Rich Rodriguez was in. Aurelia threw late, but the ump says out. When you're going good, you get all the calls. Cora was ejected, and his manager, Lou Pinella, Never wants to back away from a fight. Comes in, throws the hat, takes a kick, actually hit the ump, and there you have it. They're out of the game. Rodriguez closes out the Mariners as Ken Griffey Jr. is gone. Rob Nen, a night off, and Dusty will take it. Ten consecutive wins. Just in case you're starting to wonder, the San Francisco giant record for longest win streak, 14, set back in 1965. The 98 version is not thinking past number 11, though, tomorrow. You know, you ride this high as long as you can, and right now this club doesn't feel like it can get beat. Uh, no matter what the score is, we feel like we can come back. And just the chemistry in here, the way guys are going about their business, I think each and every time we go out there that we've got a chance to win that ball game. Yeah, not to forget Danny Darwin, who turned in a good effort for the win, and the other score the Giants were looking at. Padres, though, remain a game back as they handle the Reds behind Joey Hamilton. 4-2, your final there. And I'll tell you how great things are going for the Giants right now. Even the A's are lending a helping hand as San Francisco does try and separate themselves from the rest of the Western Division. The Dodgers, as far as Giant fans are concerned, can never be too far behind. Mike Blower's base is loaded, hit it right back to Ramon Martinez to the plate. Charles Johnson, one of the best fielding catchers around, just flat out missed the ball. In comes Ricky and Scott Spezio. They had two more in the inning, 4 nothing over L.A. And Blake Stein let it ride. The young right-hander making a stand, struck out 10 in eight and a third innings. For the victory, one of his victims, Raul Mondesi. Little cushion for the young right-hander for the A's. Jason Giambi crushed it off Martinez. Tickets to run. Out of the pack. It's likely Lou Pinello was not nearly as concerned about the Giants' nine-game winning streak as about how they were doing it. In 28 innings during the bench, the San Francisco bullpen had allowed just four earned runs. Four earned would be a decent night for the Mariner relievers. The Giants, who've come from behind to win 20 times this season, are second in baseball with four wins when trailing after eight innings. Canella, hoping the big unit would need help from his pin. You know, next to Mark McGuire, the fans come out to see Randy Johnson take batting practice. Actually took a couple out of there and got a nice reception from the fans. Top two, one nothing Mariners. Johnson, you know, live pitching's just a little different. Struck out on three pitches from Danny Darwin. Bottom three, game tied at one, bases used, two outs. Jeff Kent, a line shot to right center. Here comes Griffey Kent, get it done. Two runs would score. It was Kent's only hit. Giants up 3-1. Bottom of the fifth now, men on first and second. Barry Bonds, a left-hander who handles Johnson very well. Came in hitting 500 for his career. Three for six against him and gets another hit here. It's past Cora and Houston. Some base hit. Diaz would come in to score. 4-1 Giants. Top six, Johnson up again. Tries that same swing again. Didn't work again. Didn't bother to run, didn't need to. Darwin throws him out. Johnson 0 for 3. He's now 2 for 19 at the plate in his career. Top 7, Alex Rodriguez, a much better hitter. Knocks one to right center. Cora and Houston would come around to score. A-Rod 2 for 3. RBI's 47-48. Seattle within 1. Seattle trying to come back again, but it is the giant pin. Look at the good pick there by Rich Aurelia. Joey Cora had been 4 for 4. Thinks he should be 5 for 5. He's probably right. He's unleashing some pent-up hostility against Sam Holbrook, the umpire. Here comes Lou Pinella to join in the fray. Joey got ejected. You know Lou's not soon to follow. There he is. He's been in some good loose dirt there. Sam would have gotten his pants dirty. Two out now, and Rodriguez, that giant pen, getting it done one more time. As Rich Rodriguez gets his first save of the year, and the Giants win it by a count of four to three. San Francisco has now won ten in a row. It's longest streak since they reeled off 11 straight back in 91. Johnson did strike out ten. It's the 88th time he's hit double digits, but he falls to five and five. Giant pen two and two-thirds shutout to back Darwin. The red-hot Sean Estes goes on Tuesday, and Estes, like his fellow Giant starters, has turned it around in May and June. He's evened his mark after going 19 and five last season and starting off very slow in April. During the ten-game winter, the starters have picked up nine of those wins. 
A terrific performance by the 42-year-old Darwin on Monday. 39-year-old Hershiser became the oldest man to win Pitcher of the Month honors last month. So the veterans are stepping up. To the house, Wayne Huizinga evacuated. Roger, blonde Roger, going against the Marlins and the Blue Jays. That's your pitching hand, Rog. You used it well to get Brian Meadows. Still, Blue Jays were down 3 0. Same score in the top of the eighth. Men on second and third. When Sean Green takes Felix Heredia into the gap, Shannon Stewart and Jose would cruise in to cut the lead to 3 2. Jays got another to tie to 3 after 8. Marlins have lost 11 in a row. They'll try anything. They'll wear their hats goofy. They'll send Levon up as a pinch hitter. Levon shall be a good man, but he shall not get a hit. Randy Myers struck him out. He worked three innings for the first time in four years. Deep into extras. Some friends and family stuck around. Top of the 17th. Still the same score. Carlos Delgado the rip to left. Felipe Crespo would come in from first, and the Jays are up 4-3. Or are they? The Marlins appealed, and Tom Hallion said yes, indeed. Crespo missed third, an opinion that seems to be opposed by our video tape, which is if he hit it, but the ruling stood. So in the bottom of the 17th, we're still all tied up. When the Todds get together, Zeal with the hit, Dunwoody with the winning run. Dunwoody scores to end it. The Marlins win it by a count of 4-3 and 17, and Florida's despicable 11-game losing streak is over. It is the longest game in Florida history, and it matched the longest game in Toronto history. The Jays also played 17 at Boston back in 1980, and it is the longest interleague game ever. Marlins' first three batters scored, and then they didn't score again until the gamer, by the way, Fish Pitcher, set a team record with 16 strikeouts. During the height of World War II, it was common to only have three or four players hit more than 20 home runs in a season. By the end of this stretch of interleague play on Thursday, there could be nine or ten already this year, especially with slamming Sammy Sosa and the sizzling Cubs in the accommodating Metrodome and Mark McGuire against Chicago's other team, the most generous pitching staff in baseball. Starting in the Twin Cities, what makes Sammy run? We're not sure what makes him do anything, but this makes him trot. A LaTroy Hawkins pitch. His 20th home run of the season. It's his 11th in 10 games, and he's homered in five straight. Kerry Wood knows something about strikeouts. He'll go in Tuesday in the series. So does Henry Rodriguez. He strikes out against Hawkins. The first and third innings. Hawkins still in there in the fifth and gets him on the breaking ball this time. Now he faces Eddie Guardado. Strikes him out. Four strikeouts. He was lifted in the ninth for a pinch hitter, but Jim Riggleman had plenty of other offense. Jose Hernandez. Homers off Guardado. Third straight game he's homered in. The part-time player now has six on the season. Cubs up 6-1. And they added in the ninth. Sammy off Dan Nolte. Takes the breaking pitch and plops him in the left field. The final margin was 8-1. to one. The Cubs have won 10 straight. Sosa's hitting 10 straight. Batting 405 in that spurt with 25 RBIs. The only other Cubs to homer in five straight games are Hack Wilson and Ryan Sandberg. The Cubs try to make it 11 straight with Kerry Wood against Twins ace Brad Radke on Tuesday. But Radke will have to face Sammy. He's the fifth National Leaguer now with 20 or more homers. Sammy Spurt is one of the strongest since Mattingly tied the all-time record in 87, homering in eight straight games. Albert Bell hit a dozen in 10 games in 1995. McGuire had a similar stretch earlier this year. Speaking of which, the collapsing cards come to Comiskey and taking in batting practices the Cobra and the Mailman. Carl Malone in the off day watching power. Jason Beret's pitch is up in McGuire's eyes, and that's home run number 29 that finally gets in the seats. Not one of his typical tape measure jobs. Scary moment for Mark Pekaisic. Mike Caruso hits a line shot of Pekaisic's face, and if he hadn't turned just in time, it could have been even worse. In fact, such a gamer, Pekaisic stayed in there and pitched. Maybe should have come out. Gets ahead of Jeff Abbott, one, two, but gets a pitch right up field, by right his jersey field. emblem, and Abbott will clear the bases. A three-run triple. Frank Thomas two. walked three times in the game. He trots home. Bellamy.